Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Andrews today. I feel like uh, every Sunday here at this place is special, but uh, today is no exception. And today, um, at the beginning of our service and then with the offertory, we remember especially today our brother David Fleshman, who is with the Lord, who went to be with the Lord on the 4th of July. Um, we are blessed today to have uh, David's son Skip and uh, Nancy's daughter Tammy with us here today. And uh, we welcome you all to be with us today. And uh, David loved music, as you all probably remember and know. And uh, David was usually one of the last people out of the church because he stayed always to listen uh, to the music until the final note. Uh, along with Nancy, and um, I miss him, um, and I know he's with the Lord, and we all do too, amen? amen. We know that, and we celebrate that today, and, uh, and David in his, uh, you know, David uh, was a detail guy as well, and he left some instructions for us, uh, some requests, and, uh, and our opening, our introit, um, he requested for today, and that will be in honor of him. Uh, so, David, if you'll just say a word as well, I'd appreciate that, and I know we all would too, because uh, David Fleshman was such a such a supporter of our music program of, and of Kings Counterpoint. David uh, and Nancy were, were wonderful to Judith and I when we first came here. We came in 2016, and they were the first people who um, said welcome, and then through the years. Uh, so Marshall said that, um, Father Marshall, sorry, uh, <laughs> a bit too intimate for Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Father Marshall um, uh, said that he was here at the end of the services, but he was here at the beginning. Nancy and he, we start rehearsing here about 10.20, and they would be sat here because, uh, as uh, David said, we don't want just to hear it once, we want to hear it two or three times. <laughs> But he wasn't only just a great supporter uh, in lots of different ways of uh, the parish choir here. Uh, he was also a great supporter of King's Camp Point, and uh, Nancy and he would be at, uh, normally they would sit over here, but they would sit here on Sundays and over here at the services, and follow us all around um, the, the state. So um, this is a very special day for us, and we send our deepest love to David and to dear Nancy. Amen.
Amen. I want to invite you all now to please stand. This prayer of commendation. Uh, David's request was that there not be a formal funeral service. Uh, so this beautiful introit, and now from his church family, this prayer of commendation, which I invite you uh, to join in, that we might pray this prayer in unison. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant David. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Please remain standing now for our processional hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Welcome to Old St. Andrews. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us.
be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Second Kings. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophet cried to Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant fared the Lord, but the creditors have come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? And she said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels and not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons and pour into these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. As she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on the rest. Another time, a man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and fresh ears of grain in his sack. And Elisha said, Give to the men, then they may eat. But a servant said, How can I set this before a hundred men? So he repeated, Give them to the men that they may eat, for thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. So he set it before them, and they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Ephesians. Therefore, remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands, remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the threshold, household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together in a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. But when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But Jesus answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. 
and he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish, and those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. The Gospel of the Lord. God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Would you all please be seated? Loaves and fishes, the feeding of the 5,000. You know, loaves and fishes, sometimes we say that around here, uh, loaves and fishes when we are having a church supper and we're running low on food and we say that prayer of desperation in the kitchen, loaves and fishes, please Lord. Loaves and fishes in the feeding of the 5,000. This is a story, an account of what? What happens here? This is a... Let's say that again. This is a... All right. This is a miracle. How many of you... How many of you believe in miracles? We can go home now. All right, that's good. <laughs> Not so lucky. Uh, so I, I asked this question at 9 o'clock and at 8 o'clock, and I asked the 9 o'clockers, and I want to ask you, all right, let's suppose you leave here today, and you go to the grocery store, or to the cafeteria, or to the golf course, or tomorrow at work, wherever it might be, what was church about? Well, it was about the feeding of the 5,000. It was about loaves and fishes. It's about a miracle. Well, what is that? What's a miracle? How would you answer that question? What would you say? A miracle is something unexplained, unexplainable, okay? They got that at 9 o'clock as well. Something unexplainable. And what else is it? It's something that is maybe unexpected. Not only unexplainable, but unexpected. And what's another very important aspect of a miracle? Who's involved? God. God incarnate, Jesus Christ. Now, next question for you. Was Jesus the first person, character, in the Bible to perform a miracle? No, certainly not. We heard an account this morning uh, that Rick read for us, right? And uh, throughout the Bible and throughout the Bible story, we have had miracles. Moses at the burning bush, right? The plagues the parting of the Red Sea. And we have this great story of Elijah and Elisha and the miracles that they performed. We heard about those miracles this morning in that reading. And Jesus. And the great miracles of Jesus. I like to say um, in discussions about miracles, and all the miracles and all the things that happen in the Old Testament. And Jesus does them all. Now, this is not a matter of one-upsmanship. It's a matter of fulfillment. Because, you see, Jesus' command over nature, 
Jesus' healing, all of the miracles of Jesus. He is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Right? He is the fulfillment. And so therefore, all of these amazing things that Moses and Elijah and Elisha have done in, to heal, to raise from the dead, to command over nature, Jesus Christ did those. And here we have today probably one of the most famous miracle stories, miracle accounts of Jesus. Now I say miracle story not because it's something I think is made up. I believe this with all my heart. And if I didn't, I'd be wasting your time. And my own, too. This miracle account is in all four Gospels. And so you can bet that the Gospel writers, it was important to them. Because it's in every Gospel account. The feeding of the 5,000. So a miracle is something that is unexplainable. It's unexpected. And God's hand is involved. And so when you're talking about this with someone and you're saying what a miracle is, and you've got a great definition, I think, here. And you probably remember from um, English class, from grammar class, from lit class, that when you're telling a story, you need to think about the, you know, the who, what, when, where, why, how, and I'm not going to walk you through all of that. But the context of this story is something that's really important to understand. Now, take a look at your bulletin. What chapter are we in in Mark? What chapter is this story recounted in? It's Mark in chapter 6, exactly. And I believe it starts at verse 30, right? So what's happened before that? Well, two weeks ago, the gospel, two weeks ago, I talked about there's no place like home. Jesus goes to his hometown. Mark 6 and verse 1. And remember, he doesn't exactly get a hero's welcome. Right? A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. We talked about that. And we talked after that mission trip that so many of us took to the Dominican Republic, how there is no place like home. I know for David Fleshman, there was no place like home. And he loved this place. And that was the first part of Mark 6. And then we came to the middle part of Mark, starting at verse 7, I believe. And Father David, last Sunday, talked to us about being sent out two by two. Remember, the apostles are sent out. Jesus sends them out two by two. And Father David talked to us about how we are sent out. How we live in and live out an apostolic faith and how we are sent out to minister to one another and those in our midst who need our love and our care. And God sends us and He calls us. And this Sunday we have this account of the feeding of the 5,000. What's the verse that this starts with? It's verse 30. Is something missing? Yes. Because you see, between those two accounts of Jesus going to Nazareth and Jesus sending out the apostles two by two, and before the feeding of the 5,000, something very significant happens in the gospel story. John the Baptist is killed. John the Baptist loses his life for speaking the truth. And in the generation since, there have been thousands and millions whose lives have been lost in speaking the truth. And John the Baptist, at the hand of Herod, was beheaded and lost his life for speaking the truth. That is not in the Sunday sequence of Gospels. But it's really important for y'all, for all of us to remember and to understand when we think about this miracle account of Jesus. 
That's the when of this story. Because so often it is that God works at unexpected times. What does Jesus say at the beginning of this gospel account? Come away with me, he says, to where? A desolate place. It was so striking to me this week to look at this passage. I had never really focused on this before, but you see the word desolate three times in this gospel account. Come away with me, he says, to a desolate place. And they went with him to a desolate place. Does it say the name of the little town where they went to? No. Now we know that they're somewhere up around the Sea of Galilee, but it is never named exactly where they are. All we know is that it is a desolate place. And the crowds come. And at this unexpected time, there is this huge crowd that gathers. And Jesus who has to be filled with grief, is confronted with this crowd. So often it is in your life and in my life that we feel like we are in a desolate place, right? We all have them. We all have those desolate places in life. And we feel so alone. You know, the, the word desolate in the Bible can mean a deserted area outside of a town, but it can also mean a spiritual desolation and a spiritual loneliness. And I I think this word is so profound in this gospel lesson because God acts in unexpected ways in desolate places. And here they call on Jesus. Why do I think that this was such a significant time for our Lord? Why was he, I believe, in such grief? Well, did he know John the Baptist very well? Who leapt in his mother's womb when Mary, who is pregnant with Jesus, comes into the house? John the Baptist. Leaps in his mother's womb, in Elizabeth's womb, before he's even born. There is a connection between John and Jesus. And Jesus reaches the age of 30, and we don't know how many times they went to summer camp together or played together when they're growing up, but you can bet that they were close. And why do I say that? Who did Jesus go to to be baptized in the Jordan? John. John has lost his life. So often it is that those unexpected times and those times that it might not be a good time, someone will come to you and say, hey, you got a minute? Hey, Jesus, you got a minute? I have to think in this situation that he was confronted with that the human side of Jesus had to be thinking, no, this is really not a good time. Have you ever felt like that? When someone comes to you, it's really not a good time. How about coming back later? Does he say that? No. Our Lord is there. Our Lord teaches. Our Lord loves. And he does for you and for me. And thanks be to God for that. And that's our call as well. To be there when you get that phone call. And it may not be a good time. But we respond. And we go. And God acts and God works. In desolate places. How does God work? How does God accomplish this in this situation? It says in the gospel account, and there's another word I really want you to to notice and remember today. What does Jesus have for them? It says he had compassion for them. Does Jesus say, I have compassion for you? No, because you see, compassion is something... Uh, in the Hebrew and in the Greek, it's, it's like a, you know the expression gut-wrenching? That's compassion. It's actually, uh, the Greek word is for your innards, we would say in the South, right? It's, your, it's a gut-wrenching feeling that you feel when you cry out. 
That's what he has for the, for the crowd because they're like sheep without a shepherd, we're told. Compassion moves us uh, to action. And it moved our Lord to action here. And when that happens, and when you and I are faced with situations where that gut-wrenching compassion comes about, and God calls us in a situation that may not be good timing, but it's God's timing, He calls us to respond. He calls us to act. And He does so through this compassion. And how does this happen? What does He say? Okay, does he wave a magic wand? What does he say to them? You give them something to eat. And he doesn't just say that. You give them something to eat. But he does something Eucharistic and sacramental. What does he do with the bread? He takes it, he blesses it, he breaks it, and he gives it. Does that sound familiar? I hope so because it's sure meant to be. He takes it, he blesses it, breaks it, and gives it. You see, in your life and in my life, when we are, are presented with these opportunities, Bishop Salmon used to call these holy interruptions. You got a minute? No. <laughs> That's a holy interruption. And he would talk to the clergy and he would say, don't miss the chance for holy interruptions. It's a hard thing to do, isn't it? It's a hard thing to do for you and for me. All of us are busy. But when those holy interruptions come, it's probably a desolate place for whoever's asking you that question. And God can call upon you and can call upon me or can give you the opportunity to go to your clergy or to people in your church Hey, have you got a minute? It can be a holy interruption. And God can act when we have compassion. God, I know, has compassion. Do I believe in miracles? Absolutely. I see them. I've seen one this spring for a young man, Wade, who is in MUSC still after three months and who we expected to die. And this week walked down the hallway and has out of ICU now after three months of prayer by this church and fervent prayer by his family and friends. And thanks be to God for that. Amen? Amen. God works in this world. Sometimes we don't understand the way that God works or it feels like sometimes that God doesn't answer or doesn't hear, but God works. God acts in the desolate places. Compassion by this church is an amazing thing for me to see. In my 17 years here, over and over, I see the compassion of the people of this church and how God calls upon us in the times in our lives to reach out in times of compassion, sacramentally, to provide for God's people. So, I hope I've given you enough little background so that when you go to the cafeteria after church, you can explain, uh, maybe not in 17 minutes, but uh, about a miracle. This is perhaps the most famous of Jesus' public miracles. It's one that I fervently believe happened. And it also reinforces for me, not only this account, but that God works in this world today and can work for you and can work through this church. And so as people of faith, the feeding of the 5,000 and God working in your life and in mine, may we hold to this belief and may we call upon our Lord in the desolate times to take, to bless, to break, and to give. Amen. Amen. And so as people of faith, I invite you to stand now. Let's affirm that faith in the creed.
Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God and God. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Steve Wood, our Archbishop, Chip Edgar, our Bishop, and for Bill Skilton, our Bishop in Residence. For all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for our Rector Father Marshall, our Assistant to the Rector Father Joe, our Assisting Priest Father David, our Deacon Emeritus Lee Hershon, and our church staff. We also pray for St. Andrew's Mission and their vicar, Father Jimmy Gallant. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. In particular, San Jose Church in the Dominican Republic, their rector, Father Isaac Pringle Mejia, and their bishop, Moises Casada, and Father Rob Sturdy, Anglican chaplain at the Citadel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially our President Joe Biden, our Governor Henry McMaster, and our Mayor William Coswell. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, particularly those on our parish prayer list and for those we name at this time. Pray for This morning we remember especially Wade Todd, Mary Hodgins, Ruth Fortini, Julia Adams, Nancy Fleshman, and Jason Bundy. Are there others? <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. for all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection. Remembering David Fleshman and Catherine Lemon. In thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray, in the hearts of all people the true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
confess our sins now against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. Friends, before we break bread and share the cup on this beautiful morning, let us take time and greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome to Old St. Andrews today. Uh, I would say good morning, but I guess I went a little long, so <laughs> sorry about that. But uh, welcome to Old St. Andrews today. It's a joy to have you with us, and particularly our guests today, uh, Tammy, Skip, you all in particular, welcome to you all. Uh, they came a long way from out west to, uh, to be with us today, and we're, we're blessed to have you all with us uh, here today. I hope you'll join us after the service today on the patio for some refreshments. Um, speaking of loaves and fishes, I, I had a message from uh, Jeffrey earlier this week and, um, about what are we going to do. The there's no water. Um, the kitchen renovation is proceeding, and they've just about finished upstairs, thanks be to God, uh, in the Sunday School building, but uh, no water in the kitchen, and so uh, loaves and fishes. And so, uh, but anyway, thanks to, uh, to everybody kind of pooled together and all the jugs from the uh, grocery store from Lowe's Foods. We've got uh, jugs of water and lemonade and tea out there on the patio for you with some good refreshments. So join us after the service today. Uh, the construction is going on schedule. Best I can see, um, we are right on track, and thanks be to God for that. 
but uh, come on out after the service. One thing, you know, you have your Sunday cast net, please take that with you, but um, uh, one thing just to point out to you in particular is this uh, coming week, the, the, the last Sunday in July coming up, back to school, I know it's still July, but collection efforts for back to school wrap up by the end of July, so please, uh, if you're going to contribute to that, if you have a child's name, uh, backpacks, all the school supplies, whatever you can bring. The blue bin will be out front uh, next Sunday. You can make an extra check out to the church and just write back to school and all that money will go uh, to, to the uh, Pink House and to Halos to help out with their efforts uh, in this community to provide for children and back to school time. So um, finally a welcome to our guests. This is the Lord's Table and all baptized Christians, you are welcome to receive Holy Communion here at Old St. Andrews. If you are our guest today, please fill out uh, the welcome card. There are brochures, welcome brochures in front of you in the pew rack, and on the inside uh, of that brochure is a welcome card. If you'll place that in the offering plate after you fill it out, we sure would appreciate uh, you doing that for us. Remember that this is God's table, and our Lord took, blessed, broke, and gave. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. And at this time, uh, the offertory in honor and in memory of David Fleshman going home. Amen.
greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. And ever all can be given. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and our duty and joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us 
and we in him. The fullness of time put all things under in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 Now in the words our Lord taught us, we are bold to sing. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. If you would like intercessory prayer after you receive Holy Communion, I'll be blessed to pray with you here to decide.
me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for leading us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Worship has concluded and our service now begins. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Have a blessed day.